Okay, now this last one actually is not a rational function, so that's slightly sneaky, but it has another base that's not e. You can see that eight minus two to the x in there. So that's why I wanna pay some close attention to how this question works. Now, unlike the previous one, no graph is provided to us. So we need to do a little bit of legwork to know what's going on in the situation visually, and then we can actually evaluate the answer they're looking for. So the question very helpfully scaffolds for us. It sort of gives us a nudge in the right direction. It says, find the intercepts of this curve, and then hence, a bunch of other stuff, right? So let's just do one thing at a time. Let's find the intercepts. To find x-intercepts, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to let y equal zero. So in this case, that means eight minus two to the x equals zero. I can add two to the x to both sides. So two to the power of something equals eight. This is actually a nice whole number value. So hopefully you're seeing along with me that that's x equals three. Two cubed does give you eight. So that right there, that guy is our x-intercept. Check one, I'm now gonna work out my y-intercept and I do that by switching it around, letting x equal zero. So y is gonna be eight minus two to the zero, there's my substitution, to the zero is one, so y is gonna be equal to seven. So there's my value right there. Now you can see it then says, I'm ready now to read the rest of the question, hence find the area of the region bounded by this curve and the coordinate axis. So let's do a rough sketch of this. Okay, what's it going to look like? Well, for starters, because I've got these, uh, these two pieces of information here, an x-intercept and a y-intercept, I'm gonna put them on first, okay? So I'm gonna put an x-intercept of three, let's put that three there, and then a y-intercept of seven. It doesn't matter that my scales are um, not consistent with each other. This picture just needs to be good enough that I can actually draw over the top of it. Now, how do I thread the needle of this? Well, it's an exponential function, remember, two to the x. So usually I have um, this kind of shape in my head, exponential growth. But of course, this particular function has a minus sign in front of its exponential term. You've got minus two to the x. So instead of a shape like this, you're actually gonna get something that's upside down. It's gonna look like that. And thankfully, this shape right here does actually match what we're trying to uh, fit into, right? So therefore what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and thread the needle with this shape. It's gonna look something like that. Uh, it's not my best work, but I don't need it to be beautiful. I just need it to be good enough to work out the relevant area. It's the one that's bounded by this curve and the coordinate axis. So therefore, let's pick a color and a size. It's looking like it's gonna be in here, right? This is actually the spot where I am interested in finding the area. So I'm gonna say, Area equals, I need a lower bound and an upper bound. Now, there's a bit of a, um, there's a bit of a red herring here, right? Because in fact, that y-intercept that we found, it helps us work out what the graph looks like, but it, we don't need it to actually work out the area. All I need is the x-intercepts, sorry, the x-boundaries that um, fit in this green bordered shape here. Now, that seven is immaterial to that. All I need is an x equals zero to know that I start from zero and I go up to three. Then you've got eight minus two to the x with respect to x. Uh, it's worth noting you could also have phrased this as an integral with respect to y, but um, there's not really much of a point doing that because this is a function we do know how to integrate. Okay, now I'm gonna to go to my primitive now. Um, the eight just integrates up into eight x. Now this two to the x, you have to be careful, right? When we were differentiating um, things like two to the x, so exponentials with bases other than e, one of the results that we uh, proved was that it would be equal to this. Um, if it was two to the x, you'd get two to the x log two as your derivative. So you're multiplying by log of whatever the base number is, in this case two, okay? Now uh, being that we're integrating, not differentiating, instead of multiplying by log two, I am going to divide by log two and that's gonna give me the whole primitive function. Now we evaluate from naught to three, and off we go. So let's see here. We'll do three first, I guess. So I'm getting, whew, top boundary. Uh, eight times three is 24, and then I've got two cubed on log two. There's the top boundary. Then I'm going to subtract the bottom boundary. So let's see here, um, eight lots of zero, is zero, and then I've got two lots, uh, two to the power of zero, all over log two, like I had before. Okay, 
Uh, let's start to simplify and watch out for your brackets and um, negatives and double negatives especially. So up the front there, 24 minus 8 on log 2. I'm subtracting 0, so that has no impact. Then I've got a, watch for it, a double negative in here. So therefore I'm getting plus 1 over log 2. Two fractions, common denominator. So I'm going to get 24 take away 7 on log 2. And uh, this is an area, so therefore I'm going to conclude without approximating by saying, therefore, the area is 24 take away this square units. Happy times, okay?